Hi, I'm Emily Levitt, the Head of Education at Sylvan Learning, and I'm really glad that you all are able to join us today. Um, I'm here with Courtney Barrell, who will uh, introduce herself in just a second, and we wanted to talk to you for um, a while today about uh, learning at home, which has been a challenge for pretty much everyone, myself included, but um, along the way, we've come up with some really good tips we wanted to share with you to hopefully take the stress out of it um, a little bit. So before we kick off, just to tell you a little bit about my background, um, I started out in my education career right out of college as a middle school English teacher, and I taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade just outside of Baltimore, Maryland for a while, and then I moved into um, curriculum design and educational technology, and I've been with Sylvan Learning for about 10 years, and um, it's hands down my favorite place I've, I've ever been. Um, I love the company, I love what we do, um, and I'm really excited to be able to share um, some information with you all today. So here's Courtney. All right, thank you so much. Hello, my name is Courtney Barrell, as Emily said. Um, I am the manager of mathematics for Sylvan. Um, and like Emily, I one, love the place that I'm working right now. It's a great company. Um, I've been with Sylvan for four and a half years. Prior to working for Sylvan, I was a high school math teacher right out of college. Um, I've been a nanny, so I've worked with little friends before. I've kind of been all over the place, and I'm excited to be talking uh, with Emily today to help you guys with a little bit of, um, to give you a little bit of ease for your summer that's looking a little different this year. Yeah. So Courtney, what have you been hearing from um, our centers and parents and friends so far about how things are going at home? I think everybody is kind of in the same boat of what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously this is uncharted territory for everybody at yeah. this point. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the biggest takeaway that I have, um, you know, that I've heard and learned over the last couple of months of, um, you know, the kiddos not being in school is that we're all learning. We all need to give each other a little bit of grace. Yeah. Um, but also, we also want to make sure that we're helping our, our children. So we want to make yeah. sure that we're supporting them and we're here to help you guys with that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing a lot of the same and that it's really hard to find that, that balance of making sure the kids are getting what they need educationally, but also in a way that um, make sure it's preserving everybody's sanity and that you're getting enough breaks and you're doing things that are really um, beneficial, but it's not overkill. Yeah. And um, sometimes finding that spot's hard. So yeah. um, we're going to take Absolutely. some of the mystery out of it today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, great. So without further ado, I think maybe we should launch into our tips. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. I'm going to share my screen. And we wanted to have a couple of visuals with you all today and just kind of go over um, some tips that we think will help. with what we're gonna talk about. All right, so step one for all of us, um, Courtney and I and every teacher in America included, is that we just need to remember to breathe. Um, we're all in this together. This is probably a phrase you've heard quite a bit from teachers and other moms all over the place. Um, teachers are really trying to figure this out too, just as we've never been in this position before as parents, they've never been in this position before as teachers. Um, and, and same for administrators and superintendents all the way up to the, the state level. It's been, um, it's been a challenge for everyone and everyone's just kind of trying to make their best, their best plan in, in a really short amount of time. And so because of that, it all makes this kind of one giant experiment. And as much as we hate to experiment with our kids, we don't really have a choice right now. Um, but the silver lining is we're going to learn a lot about education and um, what works remotely, what doesn't, what works for um, home and family balance with school and what doesn't. And so um, hopefully when all of this is um, uh, a little more contained and we're all feeling like we have our feet under um, us again, that we will um, we'll have a lot of really great takeaways that we can apply to make education um, even better going forward. And um, last but not least, we've also learned that there's no one right way to do it. Right, Courtney? Absolutely. Uh, right. Yeah, there's, it's going to look different for every family. It's going to look different depending on what age of students it is that you have at home. Um, I think the big thing here, like you said, is that teachers really are 
um, missing your kiddos just as much as you are missing them going to school. <laughs> um, and they are excited to, um, to have them back and they know that it's gonna look a little different probably in the fall. Uh, but I haven't heard any teachers saying that they're afraid. They just know that it's going to be different. And teachers are so good at multitasking and adapting in the moment. That's what we are trained in more than anything else. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're ready uh, to help your kiddos once they come back. They're up for the challenge. Yeah, that's great. All right. So let's talk a little bit about school versus home versus homeschool. Because, Courtney, those are three different things, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, you have to think about when, when students are coming into school, the teachers have had a lot of time to really prepare. They know what um, different objectives they're trying to meet. They've, they've been talking with other teachers about ways that lessons have worked and haven't worked for them. Um, so it's very structured. Um, again, there's those clear expectations and they have plans for the whole year. So there is so much planning that goes into a school year and from one year to the next, even they'll adapt their lessons and make it that much better. If you're a high school or middle school teacher, even teaching the same lesson in that day, they adapt from the first period to the last period that they teach it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of planning. So that's, that's the benefit of having your students go to school, obviously, is that you've got somebody that's really prepared for that. Um, homeschooling is a whole different gamut from what we're dealing with right now as well. When you're dealing with homeschooling, um, you know, parents that are homeschooling regularly really take a lot of time to prepare and research and choose the curriculum that they want to use and they feel like it's going to work best for their family. They're using curriculums that are accredited in most cases and have some research that are going into them as well. Um, you know, they do have to follow different state or local guidelines to make sure that they are students are still hitting the different objectives and benchmarks that they have to just um, for credit and for graduation. And again, the parents have spent a lot of time really researching into that. We haven't had, have you had time for that, Emily, with your own kids? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It's, it's a little, it's a little different. So don't try to compare yourself to, you can't compare yourself to school. You can't compare yourself to homeschool because these are two completely different beats from what we are experiencing right now. Um, you know, right now, again, it's that at home, it's unexpected. We know that uh, most parents are still having to work from home remotely, um, or some might be essential workers and having to go into, into work so that's something that, you know, obviously is different for the kiddos. Um, we've seen students, I've been on calls with centers right now, even some of our tutoring centers where the kids are literally holding their little siblings and helping mom because there isn't childcare anymore. So children are being care providers. Um, and we don't really, again, as we were saying earlier, we don't know the expectations are changing or they might be unclear. In the beginning, maybe we had hope of going back to school. For a lot of states, that's not the case, and we're already closed for the rest of the year. Um, you know, you don't have to log on to any web calls. Now you have to. So things are really changing, and we're all adapting in the moment. So it's, it's normal to feel confused or stressed right now. Yeah, it really is. And, and I think, um, you know, there are a lot more families than usual that are also struggling with, you know, if, if one or both parents lost a job, mm -hmm. they might be dealing with um, a lot of financial stress, maybe food insecurity, things that they might not have had to deal with before. And that kind of family stress really, it takes a toll on everyone, children included, you know, they're, they're under the same roof, they, they know what's happening. So um, their minds just might be too heavy on, on those things to really give a lot of attention to their schoolwork right now. So just have to remember, like you were saying before, I think that's a great point. Just give everybody a little bit of grace. Um, it, this time is not easy for, for any of us. And um, we just need to remember that home is not school and, and that's okay. Absolutely. I think the other thing that, um, the, you know, we compare ourselves, we're in a, a technology is such a blessing for us to stay connected, but we all know that it can be a little bit of a curse sometimes too, because we're all posting highlights um, you know, on social media and things like that and comparing to one another. We have to remember, number one, that that's everybody's highlight reel and it's not what's happening every single minute of the day. But I think the other big thing to think about is when students are in school, there's a lot of unstructured time as well. We have recess, there's time where we might just, you know, read a book to be um, kind of get everybody to wind down. We have art, we have PE, we have music class. So there's a lot of different things that's not just the students staring at 
a piece of paper or a, a computer at school, yep. there's also those built in breaks because the kids need that. And we as, you know, as parents or as teachers have to take that into account too. They're not sitting at a desk working for six or seven hours straight when they're in school. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. So actually that's a good segue because we can talk now about um, what the home environment should look like and then we can talk a little <laughs> bit about schedule. So that, that was a good tee up. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So um, if you have um, a space in your home to have a dedicated learning spot, that's fantastic. Um, not everyone has that. I don't have that in, in my house. Um, I probably could if I rearranged some furniture and a couple rooms. And frankly, I just, my brain hurts just thinking about that. So, <laughs> so we're doing what a lot of families are doing, which is um, it's, it's pretty much the kitchen table or, or the coffee table. I have two um, sons in elementary school, so I just make sure they're in different rooms because that, that's the, the first priority is keep them separate so they can focus. <laughs> Um, but wherever you're looking in your house for like that good learning zone is just have a like try to have a permanent or semi-permanent spot for the kids to do those lessons and make sure that they have the supplies that they need, you know, pencils, if they need scratch paper for math. Um, I think it's going to be rare that um, a student can do every single thing on the mm -hmm. computer, even in high school. Yeah. So they are going to need some additional supplies other than just the computer. So make sure they have whatever they need. Um, and then whenever the child's working, just try to make sure that it's quiet um, and comfortable. And um, it's important for mine who are younger, they think that getting up for a snack is a good way to get out of doing their work. So I have learned the hard way that they, when they sit down, one of their school supplies is a snack. So that way they have no excuse to get up, <laughs> that they have everything they need, including water, you know, a cookie, whatever it is, um, to make sure that they really have no, no invented excuse to get up other than if it's like a legitimate reason. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Schedule. Courtney, what do you think that uh, families should do when they're setting up the schedule? Um, so right now, while we're still kind of in school time for most of the country, I know we're kind of getting to the place where summer is starting to kind of become more of a reality. Um, you know, try and take some cues. I would take cues from teacher or what they've been telling you of, you know, I would like them to be doing an hour of reading a day. I'd like them to have 30 minutes of math or whatever that is. And I would honestly, the, the blessing of being at home is that, and why a lot of families choose homeschooling that do is because they like the flexibility of the schedule working for what, when works for their child. If your child is really focused in the morning, a lot of them are, the morning tends to be the time that you can get them a little more focused. You know, maybe trying to schedule those in the morning, always giving breaks in between the subjects for even just a few minutes to kind of give them that time to reset. Um, but again, I would be, try to be as flexible as you can. If it's not working in the morning and it's turning into a fight, it's, you know, whatever educational activity you're trying to do after that is not gonna be effective. So just give, you know, a little bit of grace again with your kiddos, um, giving them the time to reset. Okay, if you don't want to do this right now, then you're choosing to do math in the afternoon instead of going outside for 20 minutes. You know, it's after lunch, we're going to do math. However, that is that kind of works for you, just knowing um, that you've got something kind of structured. You have, I think, something cool behind you that uh, with your schedule, right? <laughs> so this. This is, I'll adjust the camera a little bit. So when um, the schools very first uh, closed in March, when we thought maybe there was a chance we might still go back, um, I wanted to do this activity where I let the kids build their schedule for the, for the day. So the yellow stickies represent um, the different subjects. So I have up there art, math, and reading. And then at the very top, you can see there's also yellow stickies at the top for days of the week. So I had this grand idea that we could have this activity where I would put all the different um, uh, different coursework that they could do or, you know, activities for gym class or art or wherever it was on the blue stickies. And then I built the frame and then they grabbed an activity from the sticky and they put it where they wanted it. So like math on Tuesdays, we're going to do math facts rates, you know, like that kind of thing. And um, I was able to stick to this schedule for maybe three or four hours, I think, before it finally all fell apart. And it goes to your point, like my skip, it was too rigid. I was expecting mm -hmm. too much. And 
in my zeal to come up with this super cool schedule, I also um, was not being realistic about the fact that I have a full-time job and um, having to transition younger students from activity to activity was gonna be too demanding to have this much stuff going on during the day. So if I, my kids were older, it would have been fine because then, you know, here's your plan. They're old enough to, you know, kind of figure it out and run with it. But um, I was, I was a little uh, too excited. So um, <laughs> I've kept it up as kind of like a monument to my, you know, initial ambition, but um, it's, uh, it's, now it's just a dream, a dream that I can aspire to, <laughs> but it's okay that we don't get it all done. And we actually have done almost everything up here, just awesome. not as, not yeah. in that that rigid structure. The other thing I think no, to keep in mind with the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The other thing I think to keep in mind with the schedule is our work schedules. If you're somebody who's working remotely and you know what, having your children at home as well, our schedules change every week also. So today, yeah. you know, yesterday was Memorial Day. So today, all those meetings that could have been on a Monday are all kind of pushed in today. So today would have been a day that I would be a little more relaxed with my kids and their schedule. Maybe tomorrow we ramp it up and we do a little bit more reading. But even if you're doing something like those sticky notes, be, again, being flexible and knowing, sit down, what are the times that your student has to be on school to be you know, logged in for teacher? What are meetings that I have to have and I need to have my quiet time? Um, yeah. You know, Screen time is something that's gonna be a little higher for everyone, not just the kids, we're all doing it too. So knowing, okay, I have a meeting, don't feel guilty about letting them watch a movie if it's something you have an important call that you have to do okay when I get done with this I'm going to schedule myself for an hour for lunch we can go do something with the kids make sure they're outside um, we all wish our kids have PE every single day they can have PE at home every single day now <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. yeah so just making sure um, you know if you're sad that your kids only get 20 minutes for recess Give them an hour for recess. You get to kind of structure their school day the best way that you want you want them to, you know, or the way that you want them to be. Yeah, that's true. And and I think you brought up a good point a second ago about um, like don't feel guilty because we there are a lot of things that we have to juggle and we can't always, you know, we can't always do it. I had, you know, for example, I had a three hour meeting last week and it was smack in the middle of lunchtime. And so my kids had lunch at eleven because I was not going to be available until you know, one or two, and if they got hungry, they they knew they couldn't come in and, and interrupt me. So it was yeah. either grab a bag of chips out of the pantry, and I'll be with you in a couple hours, or you could have your mac and cheese at 11. So right. you know, we're, all, we're right. all just kind of doing what we need to do to make sure that we can all get um, everything finished that we need to in the, in the time yeah. that we have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then um, I guess my last thing with the schedule here and building in variety and those breaks, obviously yeah. we've talked a lot about the breaks, but with the variety, don't be afraid. If you see worksheets all day, don't work. The, the students are not doing that when they're in school. If you're seeing a lot of them right now, it's because teachers are adapting very quickly and just tr trying to provide any easy resource and trying to keep it easy on the parents, honestly, in most cases. Yeah. Um, so worksheet is something simple without you having to create an activity from it. But if it's even something like, um, you know, if they're practicing addition, you could easily, um, you know, have flashcards. You can go outside with some chalk and have different numbers written in the driveway or on the sidewalk and have them jumping around to show you different sums. So trying to find a different way, memory, another thing you could do is a memory game and just taking some note cards or pieces of paper and cutting them up. Um, and half of them have the addition fact and half of them have the answer to the addition fact and they have to flip them and match them. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, them just sitting and looking at a worksheet or them just looking at a workbook all day because that's not quite what they're doing in the classroom. They get a little variety. So if you can try and mimic that a little bit, I think teachers, again, are trying to give the easy solution for parents because they know that it's hard on you. Right. Um, but you know, if you have the time and if you feel comfortable, that can be a way to make it a little easier to, to, to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. When my kids were really young and they were learning their sight words, I made sight word flashcards and we would practice when they were in the bathtub because they were a captive audience. And um, <laughs> I would sit in there with them and we would go through um, the sight words, but it became a game, you know, they'd have a big pile of bubbles and, you know, I got to spend some quality time with them and it was a good way for them to learn their sight words. So. There, there are ways to, uh, yeah, get, get creative, get crafty. <laughs> okay, 
alternative activities. This is something that I'm still working on, but I'm excited about because um, I feel like everyone's house is really, really busy. Um, and there's a lot of work to do. And let's face it, uh, the work usually falls on mom because that's kind of how things go. Um, this is a really good time to start um, indoctrinating your children into the fine art of household chores and um, the family becoming a team, right? So if you've been wanting to um, offload those chores and kind of reset expectations with the kids, um, you know, maybe they're old enough now to do something around the house that they weren't old enough to do last year. Um, or maybe you finally, you know, have a couple minutes to say, all right, let's talk about loading the dishwasher. Glasses go on top, plates go on the bottom, rinse them off before you put them in, you know, that whole thing. Um, it's, it's not exciting. You'll definitely get some pushback. But um, if you're looking for um, an opportunity to kind of lighten the load on yourself, you know, get some responsibility more on their plates and, and teach them some more um, uh, household -y kind of skills, this is a great time to do it. Um, it's also a really good time for life skills, which is the close cousin to chores. So by life skills, I mean things like, it's not something you have to do every day, but it's something that like as a, as a grown person out in the world, it's good to know. So depending on the age of your child, you could teach them to how to sew a button or how to plant a garden or how to change a tire you know, whatever it might be, balancing their, you know, balancing um, a bank account, it's very, very important and under, under taught skill, I would say. Um, so yeah. anything like that um, would be, this is a great opportunity to do that, to help them become a little more self-reliant as human beings down the road. Absolutely. And yeah. teachers have yeah. them do this in classrooms that, you know, they're, again, you'll, you'll definitely get the pushback <laughs> if it's something, especially if it's not, something that they're used to at home, but the teachers give students chores and they have the responsibility of keeping the classroom a certain way. Not, you know, teachers not going through and cleaning up all the scraps of papers off the floor. The teacher is not going around and getting out the supplies for 30 students every single day. She gives assignments to different kids in the class. You know, please make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself. They'll check the tables before they're allowed to go on to the next activity. So these are things that they are used to. Um, Kids like routine, they like to have expectations set for them as much as they might not act like they like it. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't feel bad and I would definitely recommend upping these and especially the life skills too. How many times I wish, I, I personally did not learn how to balance checkbooks, I did not learn about loans. Um, these are things that you could definitely talk to them about if they're, you know, especially with the older kids. Um, but even things like cooking, you're measuring, right? So if you wanted to bake cookies, who doesn't want to bake cookies with mom? That's such a great memory to hold on to. Um, you want to make a double batch. Let's talk about now we need to add these two fractions together to see how much, you know, how many chocolate chips I'm measuring or, you know, how much sugar goes in the cookies. Um, so these are great things to teach them about and to make them feel like they have a little bit of responsibility, which will help them feel good too. Yeah, that looks great. That's really good. Okay, and today is a beautiful day to start talking about going outside. So what are some ways that we can move learning outdoors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so honestly, first of all, unstructured play is a way for them to learn. There's so much learning going on and, you know, you can kind of just set them free. And especially if you've got siblings, you know, they're working together um, or learning maybe how to have some conflict management between the two of them if they're not working together. Um, so even honestly, just setting them free in the backyard is great as it gets, you know, we're getting into summer now. So we're getting into those warmer months. Anything that you can do with water or gardening, like you said, kind of getting themselves dirty is going to be great for them. Um, we all just need it for our mental health too. It's good to be outside. We need to be exercising. We need to be, you know, getting those, the nutrients from the sun. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's a great time. Um, you know, reading outside, I'm going to give you some time. There's no screens outside. We're all at this point, I'm tired of screens. Um, the kids might not think that they are, but they are, they're craving that, that time away from it as well. So grab a book. I want you to go outside and sit under the tree for 30 minutes and read. Um, yeah. take your, you know, your colored pencils and your crayons outside and just go draw art time, right? So we're going to go outside and just have some unstructured time outside for that. Um, and then, you know, you can get educational with it too. You can draw a number line on the sidewalk chalk and have them add and subtract and go back and forth. Um, any kind of multiplication and division facts, all those kinds of things are easily done outside. Um, you could draw circles. If you're teaching multiplication or teaching division, you could draw 
circles in the driveway or on the sidewalk and have them go collect rocks or sticks and show me two times three and put yeah. you know two circles and then put groups of three in there and have them kind of run around i've seen people doing um scavenger hunts there's a lot of great resources that you can find you know if you're just learning the alphabet find something on our walk that starts with the letter a find something on our walk that starts with the letter b um, and kind of making a game out of that when you're going on a walk outside. Um, you know, again, it's just a nice reset. It's going to be nice outside. Definitely make sure, again, 20 minute recess, which we all know is kind of stinky. This is a great time to give them a nice, you know, 45 minutes to play outside and just be kids. It's summertime. Yeah. Yeah, now that's great. And I was thinking too that they, um, if they have a nice spot outside where they um, would be great to like sit and read or whatever, they have, um, my kids use workbooks sometimes too to supplement um, what they're doing at school. And so I my one son in particular who likes to take the workbook out and he sits under a tree with the pencil and he just goes through the pages. And it's nice for him because it feels a little bit less like I'm being forced to sit at a desk and, and do this work. And um, they're engaging, he enjoys it, and he can do it outside, and that makes it feel a little more novel, um, yeah. and it makes him a little more eager, eager to do it. Um, and the this and and it's helpful, you know, because um, the the schools have understandably, I think, backed off on the workload that the kids are typically getting right now. And mm -hmm. so, um, just to kind of keep them keep them engaged and keep them fresh, I've been wanting them to do a little bit extra. Um, and, but the other thought I had was, wouldn't it be fun to have um, a bingo game based on what you see outside? So yeah. um, I am, I am positive you could probably find this on Pinterest because you can probably find everything on Pinterest, <laughs> but, but you could make bingo cards and then in the squares you would have like things you might see on a walk or things you might see in the woods, you know, depending on kind of what's, what's near you. And then you cross things off as you find them and then you know, whoever wins bingo can be the person who chooses the movie for movie night or whatever it might be that you do. Yeah. So um, I know it took me, I had to sit down and make a list of um, game rewards and positive reinforcement activities that were not food related because I was like, I can't give, I can't get brownies out for everything. I need to, to really expand my options. So it was things like, um, you know, I need to do that for myself. Day. Yeah, it's, I had to really stretch, but I came up with some good ones, and um, choosing the movie for movie night was was one. So yeah, that's a good one. That's my one. That was my win for that day. <laughs> yeah. you take them where you get them, right? I love it. I love it. Yeah, and for um, for the workbooks, how you were just saying with the workbooks, as we transition from school year, where teachers are still kind of providing resources into summer again, as that's kind of ramping up for all of us in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, you know, Sylvan does have workbooks available with Random House. If you want to look into those, those are really great resource where you can work on both reading and math. And we have some summer based ones. Um, so, you know, just having those, a lot of parents like to use those every summer as it is. Mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, if you were closed down as of March through the end of the year, that's going to be, you know, if we go back in the fall, that's six months that the kiddos are going to be out of school. We definitely want to make sure that we're still engaging. It doesn't need yeah. to be a lot over the summer, just a little, a little time. You know, an hour or two a day over the summer, yeah. honestly, is enough right. um, just to make sure that they're staying sharp on their skills. So, you know, if you're not wanting to look for different resources, I would right. grab the workbook from the grade that they just finished to make sure that they're reviewing and really feeling comfortable for the upcoming year. This isn't really the time to be trying to push really extra hard in doing the next year unless they're really ready for it. Oh yeah, summer smart. <laughs> this looks like a plant, I know, but they were right behind me on the dining room. <laughs> yeah, those are the best. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would recommend getting, unless your student has already been working a year ahead, I would, I would recommend getting the grade that they just finished just to make sure since there was some lost time that they're really confident and strong on the skills yeah. from the school year that they just finished since again they're going to be missing a lot of instruction time um, and if they fly through that and then they're ready for a preview of the following year then go for it but I please do not stress yourself out with trying to push 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 too much teachers are ready ready to review to start out the year they're already all in that mindset and already all prepping i talk with teachers every single day and they're literally already planning and prepping for okay we might have to you know teach the last two months of the previous year in this upcoming year um and what is that going to look like so again give yourself some grace yeah yeah oh, that's a good point um 
<clears throat> just kind of some last thoughts uh, for parents before we, we start wrapping it up is that um, I know probably every single person watching this has already observed this in their own home is there's just going to be more screen time. There just is, um, especially if we have a rainy day and um, you're, or you're, you yourself are really busy with your own job and you can't, um, you know, you can't make the day as, as structured off screen as you would like to be. Just kind of tell yourself it's temporary. It may, may be going on longer than you wish it would be, but it won't be like this forever. And um, just kind of have to make the peace with it for a, you know a little bit. Just you know make make sure you're guiding them to make good choices about what they what they're watching, what they're doing on the mm -hmm. screen. But there just will be more screen time. That's that's yeah. just kind of the end of the story. And um, if you're ever uh, if you feel like your child's really struggling, uh, just you know keep in mind that their mental and physical health comes first. Um, it's uh, again, like we were saying in the beginning, we none of us have ever been through this before, and it is stressful. So if, if your kids are showing a lot of signs of stress, it's okay to say, you know what, we're going to put this aside for today. Today, we're going to focus on, um, you know, we're going to hang out together, we're going to spend some time, we're yeah. going to, you know, take it easy, cuddle up on the couch, watch your favorite movie, read your favorite comfort book, like, we, you know, we always go back to Harry Potter and, um, and you know, kind of, we'll we'll tackle this again the next day. So I I would say if you need to pause on the on the work for a little bit, it's totally fine. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is a three month stretch where we would be using PTO days maybe to give ourselves a long weekend. Maybe you, you know your child had a physical at twelve and you decided to give them the day like you would normally and just have a special day. I don't think those things should be going away right now. Mm -hmm. um, we we still deserve to have a day to ourselves. Uh, the kids sometimes, my mom would do that for me when I was, I mean, all the way back to elementary school. If I woke up and was really having a hard day right from the start, it wasn't a regular thing. I was not allowed to take advantage, but once or twice a year, we would have a personal day. Um, and, you know, that was without a pandemic happening. So definitely still allow for those things to happen. Oh, sorry, he has an excuse absence today. We're going to work on that tomorrow. That's fine. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, before we go, we wanted to make sure that you all knew um, that we have some extra resources for you. Um, we we say, um, you know, among among ourselves at Sylvan and, and our centers, you know, and Courtney and I are talking to all of our centers all over North America, and we say this to our coworkers too, um, is that we're, we're always here. It's never a bother. This is why we're here. We love talking to you. We want to help. That's the favorite, that's our favorite part of the job is, is getting to talk to all of you and and really understanding what your your wants and needs and concerns are because if we don't know those things um we're not doing our jobs well so we want to make sure that we can really support all of you the best that we can so to that end um we have uh, a gmail account set up for any uh lingering questions you might have or if we've sparked an idea that you wanted to chat with us about um if you can just send it to uh, sylvan zoom event at gmail.com we'll be checking that email account through um the upcoming weekend and we will absolutely get back to you with, um, with any information we have to share. And um, we also would definitely recommend uh, the Sylvan Summer Workbooks uh, that we have available. Um, they're available through Split Rock, uh, Split Rock Books. Um, the URLs are, are here on the screen, um, but you can also find them wherever books are sold. You know, Costco, Amazon um, uh, will soon be found at Walmart and you know, a lot, lots of other places. So, if you want to look for us, we are pretty easy to find. Um, and uh, we hope that you have had um, a couple nuggets you could take away today. And um, thanks for joining. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Bye.